Something about Michio Kaku's expression didn't sit right. This wasn't the confident, ever-curious, theoretical physicist we were used to seeing on television screens, casually unraveling the mysteries of the cosmos. No, this time, he hesitated. His voice cracked, his gaze lingered too long on a single image behind him, and when he finally spoke, the room full of elite scientists, journalists, and space historians froze in absolute silence. Join us on this cosmic journey as we explore the Michio Kaku breaks in tears. The moon is not what you think. Let's find out. The presentation was supposed to explore new data from lunar observation satellites, but what unfolded sent shockwaves through the scientific community and beyond. This wasn't just data. It was a cosmic confession. Something hiding beneath the moon's surface had just rewritten everything we thought we knew. And by the end of this video, you too will understand why Kaku could no longer hold back his tears. Because what they found beneath the surface of the moon wasn't natural. Kaku began with a revelation that dismantled decades of consensus. Utilizing newly deployed quantum deep imaging satellites, researchers scanned the moon's subsurface with technology more advanced than anything previously attempted. Instead of solid rock, what they found were massive hollow chambers, some spanning hundreds of kilometers, arranged in symmetrical patterns no natural process could explain. These voids weren't ancient lava tubes or coincidental air pockets. They had structure, regularity, alignment. They had intent. When thermal readings revealed localized heat sources pulsing from within these voids, Temperatures too precise, too focused to be geological, the entire room felt the weight of something unspeakable. Something inside the moon was not only designed, it was still alive in some way. Whether a reactor, a machine, or a monument, Kaku didn't say. He didn't have to. The data spoke for itself. Then came the patterns, gravitational anomalies that had always been dismissed as measurement quirks or minor inconsistencies, but mapped in high definition, they formed a global grid, crisscrossing from pole to pole, aligning perfectly with the internal cavities and reflective metallic regions uncovered by radar. This was not randomness. It was engineering. Kaku displayed gravitational maps from three independent agencies showing this lunar lattice, an invisible skeleton supporting the moon's position with disturbing precision. If this grid was functional, if it still had power, then the moon might be maintaining more than just its own orbit. It could be actively influencing Earth, its tidal effects, its axis stability, perhaps even more. The moon, as Kaku hinted, may not be just a satellite, but a regulator. And if it was placed, if it was built, then we must ask, by whom and for what purpose? As he moved, Kaku's voice took on a more solemn tone. He showed depictions from Sumerian, Mayan, and Egyptian texts, all cultures that referenced the moon not as an ever-present object, but as an arrival, a newcomer, even a teacher. He quoted stories of nights without the moon and sky gods descending from it. Until now, we had seen these as poetic metaphor. But layered over the lunar data, the old myths began to feel like warnings like fragmented memory preserved through symbolism, even lunar eclipses, once explained away as astronomical coincidence, took on new meaning. The moon's size and distance are so precise that it can perfectly block the sun during an eclipse, a phenomenon unique to Earth. Coincidence or cosmic engineering for observation or spectacle? The more Kaku revealed, the clearer it became. The moon might not just be influencing Earth's geology, it might have been guiding its consciousness for millennia. The final act was the most chilling. Using subsurface radar and high-frequency tomography, scientists identified reflective materials beneath the moon's crust, metals unknown to modern science, scattered in geometric arrays that absorbed and redirected radar waves in unnatural ways. These were not natural ores. These were alloys designed for function. When subjected to simulated stress tests in virtual models, these materials behaved like shielding, like casing materials meant to endure time,
pressure and even impacts. Kaku suggested, without fully claiming, that we might be looking at remnants of an ancient machine, or worse, a dormant system waiting to be activated. Moonquakes, those strange seismic echoes recorded since the Apollo missions, began to sound less like geological groans and more like movements, signals, reverberations from something internal. The moon wasn't just mysterious anymore, it was responding, and that meant one thing, something inside it was still listening. One of the most haunting revelations Kaku brought to light wasn't new at all. It had been hidden in plain sight for over 50 years. During the Apollo 12 mission, NASA engineers deliberately crashed the ascent stage of the lunar module into the moon's surface to measure seismic activity. What they recorded was so bizarre that many dismissed it as a technical anomaly. The moon rang like a bell for nearly an hour. But now, with new understanding of its internal structure and materials, that data has resurfaced like a long-forgotten warning. Natural rock doesn't resonate like that, not unless it's hollow, or worse, hollow and reinforced. Kaku referenced new simulations conducted with AI-powered geological models that confirmed the only plausible explanations. Either the moon is vastly different from every other planetary body we've studied, or it's not a planetary body at all in the conventional sense. What makes this even more spine-chilling is that similar impact events later produced the same bell-like echoes, consistent across multiple Apollo missions. The moon was reacting like a tuned instrument. And now we have to ask, who built the instrument, and why was it designed to respond to collisions at all? Kaku then turned his attention to a mystery that had quietly been growing in the scientific underground for years. The moon's strange emissions. Radio astronomers have been detecting low-frequency bursts from the moon's dark side, patterns of electromagnetic activity that don't match any known geological or solar interactions. These signals are highly localized, occurring in specific coordinates and at consistent intervals, as if responding to orbital positions or even lunar phases. When filtered through advanced signal processing algorithms, some of these emissions revealed repeating, digital-like patterns, pulses that eerily resembled early computer language. Could it be a forgotten beacon? A long dormant surveillance system? Kaku stopped short of confirming it, but the fact that these frequencies spike when deep space probes pass behind the moon is no longer seen as coincidence. Whatever lies beneath that dusty surface might not just be a relic, it might be aware and perhaps even aware of us. One of the most mathematically baffling aspects of the moon is its orbit. It's almost as if it were placed with surgical precision. The moon's size and distance allow it to perfectly cover the sun during total eclipses, a phenomenon found nowhere else in our solar system. But that's just the beginning. Kaku revealed orbital simulations showing that the moon's path is so stable it defies long-term gravitational drift. Most moons in the solar system exhibit some wobble, some irregularities over millennia. Ours does not. Even more bizarrely, the moon's rotational speed is perfectly synchronized with Earth so that we only ever see one side of it. This tidal locking is presented in textbooks as a coincidence, a result of gravitational forces. But the probability of it happening in such an ideal way, creating a perfectly consistent eclipse engine, is astronomically low. It's as if the moon was designed not just to orbit, but to perform, to act, to guide, or even to monitor. And Kaku, usually the optimist, could no longer call that arrangement natural. Perhaps the most disturbing part of Kaku's presentation didn't involve scientific data. It involved what had been erased. He referenced dozens of original Apollo mission recordings, including telemetry data and high-frequency voice transmissions from astronauts that have either gone missing or were inexplicably recorded over. Some of these tapes reportedly contained astronaut reactions to unidentified lights, unexplained mechanical sounds beneath the surface, and moments where communication was suddenly jammed when orbiting the far side of the moon. Whistleblowers from within NASA some now in their final years, have begun speaking of deliberate omissions, redacted mission reports, and even private briefings where astronauts were told never to speak about what they heard or saw on the moon. Kaku, always cautious with claims of conspiracy, admitted that the silence itself had become too loud to ignore. If the moon truly is something else, something far older, far more complex, 
then those who know the truth are guarding it for a reason, and that reason might be more terrifying than the truth itself. As Kaku stepped away from the podium, a silence heavier than gravity filled the room. This wasn't the silence of scientific awe. It was the silence that follows a deep realization that something we've stared at our entire lives might not be what we believed. The moon, once a romantic symbol of serenity and light, now casts a far darker shadow. It may not be a natural satellite, it may not be lifeless, and it may not be ours. From its impossible orbit to its hollow echoes, from ancient myths to disappearing NASA tapes, everything we know is unraveling. And if Kaku, a man grounded in logic and quantum law, breaks down in tears over what the moon truly is, then we should all be paying attention. Because this isn't just about astronomy anymore. It's about who or what placed the moon there and why it's watching us. Now, the question remains, what happens next if we truly unlock the moon's secrets? If we dig too deep, will we awaken something we were never meant to find? Thanks for joining us on this cosmic journey. Please tell us your opinions in the comments section below. This is Cosmic Inquiries, signing off.